united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Hi, I'm Pastor Joe Williams, and this is my wife, Deborah, and we're here today to uh, share a little bit with you and hopefully encourage you. Uh, in particular, if you were listening last week, um, I was talking about how we can train our children as unto the Lord, and this week and the next couple weeks, we're going to give you some, uh, uh, some choices and some alternatives that might help you raising your children, especially uh, in regards to their education. Um, what I'd like to do first before we do anything else is Deborah and I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. And we know that there are, are people right now who are struggling with lots of uh, difficult decisions. And they're trying to figure out how to raise their children the right way. Single moms, single dads, grandmothers and grandfathers now who uh, have the privilege but the tremendous pressure and responsibility of taking care of their children young couples who are not sure how to raise their children, what their priorities should be. Father, we ask for your guidance and your love. And uh, we just hope that today, Lord, we just give these people some tremendous answers from your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before I even read any of the scripture there, I want to introduce my wife to you. We've been married for 30 years. We're high school sweethearts. We started dating many years before that. We graduated from Eastwood High School. And uh, uh, Deborah, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? What do you do right now? I am a social worker in a skilled nursing facility. Okay. And before you were a social worker, what did you do? I, I've uh, been a wife and a mother. We have three children. We have a, a daughter that's uh, 26, and we have a son that's 23, and we have another son that's 20. Right? And you can tell right there one of the differences between men and women. Immediately she went to our children. to, <laughs> to Even though she is a, a career woman and, and has a degree in social work and uh, uh, is a, uh, a very intelligent mom and all of that, her first thought was my children. And so I'm sure some of you, no matter what your uh, walk in life is, we really we want to know what does God want us to do with our children. Um, let's read. Proverbs 22, 6 again is what I started with last week. It says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, I told you last week, I copied a little bit from Chuck Swindoll, but I listened to a, a sermon series of his, and he, he tells us that training them up is actually taking the bent that they have towards what they desire to do, what their gifts and their talents are, how God has created them, and then enabling them to live the way God wants them to. So it's not that you're creating in, in them what you want them to do, but what you want God wants them to do. My wife and I have had many discussions, sometimes disagreements, on uh, how to discipline our children, what their goals should be, what school they should go to. One of the things we're going to talk about this morning is some choices that you have. And we homeschooled our children for a while. Sometimes they were a few years, they were in a private Christian school, and they were in public school. And one of the things I want to let you know is that there is no perfect way, there is no set way except for what God wants you to do in raising your children. So I want to put you at ease. Some people say, well, should I homeschool? Is that the perfect way? Uh, do I, if I homeschool, are my children uh, not being salt and light in the world? Uh, am I not supporting the public schools? Um, should I put them in Christian school? And yes, to be honest, over the next few weeks, we, we are going to steer you partly in the direction of Christian schools, and, and I want to give you some of those alternatives. But I just want to let you be at ease that uh, no one's judging you, and they shouldn't be judging you. The only person that you should try to please is the Lord. So what I like to do is turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6, which is a real famous set of scriptures. And let me we'll read from you here. It's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we'll read verses uh, 1 to 7. 
Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the judgments with the Lord, your God, has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it, so that you and your son and your grandson might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded you all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. O Israel, you should listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, just as the Lord, uh, the Lord your God of your fathers has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words, which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign of your hand, and they shall be as the frontals on your forehead. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. Then it shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you great and splendid cities which you did not build, and houses full of all good things which you did not fill and hewn cisterns which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant, and you shall eat, and you shall be satisfied. Then watch yourself, lest you forget the Lord who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You know, we could go on, and some of you have heard great messages by different pastors and teachers about raising our children in, in, in what we do in, in Deuteronomy. A couple of things I want to point out here. Did you notice that in uh, verse 2, it says, your son and your grandson. And we also know that it, it, it is our daughters, okay? But our children, and one of the things I want you to understand is I believe that right now we are in a society where we need each other and all the generations more than we ever have before. For the past 20 or 30 or 40 years, our families have begun to split up and our foundations. We've lost our grandparents, our aunts and uncles, and our responsibility and the privilege of taking care of one another. And with finances being the way it is, one of the things I want to talk to you about and encourage you is that we need to bind together as families, all the generations, and in churches. We need to help out some of the single moms and dads if they can't afford to uh, uh, put their kids in a Christian school. Or, or maybe they need some help with a mom who wants to stay home, a mom who wants to stay home in homeschool. I know that my wife and I, the first few years that uh, we were married, my wife worked, and then when she quit, she stayed home with our children, and I worked two other jobs. Deborah, tell us a little bit about what that meant to you. Well, it was a tremendous blessing that I was able to stay home with our children. Uh, we had a many nights of prayer and um to see what the Lord wanted us to do, and we really felt that the Lord had given us those children for us to take care of, and we had a lot of wonderful support from grandparents and aunts and uncles that that would that they encouraged us to do that, and um, so that was a really important thing, and also the fact that you worked extra jobs so that I could uh, stay home with our children, and uh, we always didn't have all of our our wants, but we had all of our needs met because the Lord honored that. Yeah. Now, did uh, we make a lot of money? No, we didn't make hardly any money. <laughs> we didn't make very much money, but it was a blessing, and it was worth right. it. Right. Now, the flip side of that, though, you and I, especially being a pastor's wife, we have to be careful. We never want to condemn people no. if, if the husband and wife choose to uh, not stay home, mm -hmm. and they have to put them in a daycare somewhere or have grandma or grandpa watch them. It doesn't mean that you're a terrible parent or anything no. like that. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's what God puts on your heart, but what I will do is challenge you because sometimes what Deborah said is important our wants and our needs are much different sometimes we think we have to have all these material things and really what our children really need from us is our time and our love and sometimes that might mean staying home and not getting the car and the boat or living in a smaller house or like my kids don't even remember what it was like 
to or it's a big joke in our house that when everyone went out to eat, which was a big deal, we always ordered water. They never could order soda pop or anything or iced tea because that was a dollar fifty two dollars for each person. So we could almost pay for a whole nother meal. And 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 now as grown kids, uh, have, we have three children. When they come back, sometimes we go to a restaurant. I'll order an iced tea or something, and they look at me like. What are you splurging for? Yeah. I said, well, you guys are grown now. That's true. You're out of the house. Tell us a, a little bit about our children. Well, we, they're all wonderful. Um, I know most parents think that, but we've been very blessed by our children. Uh, they've actually helped us tremendously as a family, but also in ministry. If it wasn't for our children, they all love the Lord and accept the Lord um, as young children. So that's been a blessing in, in rearing them also, that they... Uh, knew the Lord and they knew how to pray and and most of the time they kept us in check too. They would remind us about the promises of the Lord and uh, so all all three of them love the Lord and um, our daughter is married and uh, her how old and her, is she? She's 26 and her and her husband have served the Lord and uh, in ministry and they're doing a great job and um, and what they're doing in their lives and then our other son is away in Italy studying and so. We have to release him to the Lord and pray for him. And then our youngest son is at college, too. But they're all serving the Lord. They're not perfect, but they're wonderful children and wonderful adults. And they've really been a blessing. And I do want to add that without them, that as far as ministry, that would have been a very difficult thing. They um, wanted to be part of what we were doing. We were able to just spend a lot of good family time together. And even when I went back to work, they were there with us. And we tried to make sure that we had family time together. Good, thank you. And I want to contrast something here. Let's uh, let's look at First Samuel, and we'll look at uh, chapter two. And I'm just going to read briefly, not the entire story, but if you look at Samuel, there are are two different families, and one was Hannah and her son Samuel, and then we have Eli, who was the high priest, and he had his his sons Hophni and Phineas. And you see the exact opposite. We see two young men who had privilege, who had all the power, who had actually, Eli, it doesn't say that he was an ungodly man. He, he wasn't a, a priest who disobeyed the Lord, um, who was a hypocrite or stole or anything. He was honest. But one of the things it does show is that he was not a good father. His sons were basically spoiled. He did not discipline them. He did not handle them. Yet Hannah... She dedicated Samuel to the Lord. Now, when we say dedicated to the Lord, sometimes it's a little scary because I know my wife wouldn't be here right now if I said we're going to take one of our children and hand him off to somebody and they're going to raise him. Okay, and we're, we're giving him to a priest or a preacher somewhere. And, and th that's not what we mean. But what I do want to kind of encourage you that we need to get back to something that maybe I've forgotten is that when she took Samuel, she would go back and look after him. And she still had input in her life. Even Moses' mother would do those kind of things when she nursed him. I believe, especially in our society today, that even though people are private, and as a, a pastor and a pastor's wife, we have to respect people's uh, privacy, I think we need to let down our guard a little bit. And I think that we don't need to wait until a family is falling apart mm -hmm. with their children in rebellion and all sorts of problems we need to help them, help them in raising their children, maybe even help, like I mentioned earlier, paying for some Christian schooling, uh, maybe helping them so if someone wants to stay home and homeschool, if they need us to watch their children sometimes, to maybe pay for something, to help them in all sorts of different ways. In a Christian community, I, I know we're not some kind of cult, and we're not in a compound somewhere, but I do believe that we need to support each other more than we are now. You know, one of the, the sad things that my wife and I have experienced uh, being a pastor and a pastor's wife is many great families, people who have all sorts of wonderful intentions. We see their children go off in rebellion. We see marriages on the rocks, people divorce, all sorts of things have happened. And part of the reason is, I know people have their own responsibility, but we need to support one another. Um, Deborah, tell me a little bit about your, your thoughts on that. Yes, I believe we had a lot of support from older people. We really um, 
had a lot of wisdom and encouragement from other people. Um, also, you know, I had friends. I mean, I remember staying home and being part of mops and Bible study groups where I could be encouraged as a young mother and uh, find, you know, um, biblical uh, answers to my questions and um, then to be able to, for Joe and I to pray together and to, to determine if how we were going to raise our children and uh, what was their bent, as he was already uh, referred back to, because uh, all three of our children have different uh, personalities, different needs, different wants, and so it's good to be able to find that out from other people. So also, I believe that we should not be selfish. If um, you know, we had help, and and John and I are trying to be there and be available to help, uh, like he said, take care of children or take food or. He's mowed grass and taking care of homes and stuff like that just to help out people, just to show them that we care, not just uh, words but actions. Now, also, um, I've been blessed. I'm kind of a mile wide and an inch deep, so to speak. But I have a business degree. I went to UTEP. Um, I was in business for quite a while. And then I quit that and, and became a public school teacher and taught in public school. We were house parents at the New Mexico Boys and Girls Ranch. And then for the past 16 years, I've been a, uh, a pastor at Westside Community Church. And one of our dreams from the very beginning was to someday, when our church got big enough, to have a daycare, a Christian daycare for parents who, who needed help taking care of their children. We especially had a heart for single moms and dads who didn't know what they were going to do. Maybe they didn't have a grandparents and aunts and uncles, and they needed someplace safe and someplace with a Christian background to take care of their kids. And we always thought about having that, uh, about having a Christian school someday uh, in elementary and at least through middle school. Uh, I don't know if we had big enough dreams to have a high school or not, but we thought at least through that foundation. I know that even when I was a public school teacher, uh, I made sure that every night that we read diligently with our children, memorized our Bible verses. Later on, we went to Awanas, which is a great program. But even even that, we decided that it was our responsibility first as, as, as parents. Now, with the last few minutes here that we have, what I want to do is, is give you some uh, alternatives and some choices, and we'll, my wife and I would like to discuss it a little bit, and I don't want to be controversial or anything, so really, I want it to be something positive. All right? So, first of all, there are three basic choices in schooling, all right? especially as Christian parents. You can go to public school, you can homeschool, or you can go to a Christian school. And my wife and I have, have participated in, in all three. Our first daughter, because we lived way out in the sticks at the New Mexico Boys Ranch, um, we decided that we didn't really want her uh, going on a long bus ride for like 50 miles and, uh, and some safety reasons that we decided to homeschool. And my wife did that. Uh, and then I, I would help her with that. And then our other children, we began to do homeschooling even when I was a public school teacher. And sometimes I caught a little flack for that. When other public school teachers would find out that I was homeschooling, they thought, well, don't you believe in it? And are you a traitor? And, and no. You know, one of the things I want to set your mind at ease, I don't believe that there is a, a battle that there, in, in the respect of being uh, public school is all evil and everything. There are some fine Christian teachers. There are some fine Christian principals in the public schools that I know. But I do want to tell you this. It is becoming overwhelming. It is more and more difficult. I just retired from public school teaching about three years ago. And it became more and more difficult for me to maintain my Christian beliefs, to teach children in a Christian way, uh, to make sure that I bridge the gap between the, quote, separation of church and state. Many times I had parents that would come to me with their children and things were falling apart in public school. Their grades were terrible. They were a single mom or single dad or dad was, was, uh, was a drunk, all, a drug addict, all sorts of things happened in their life. And I couldn't tell them out in the open about Jesus. But when I would take them into my classroom and my office and I would counsel with them, I would say, you know what, can I tell you what I really think is going to help? And I would pray with them. I'd tell them about Jesus Christ. And I thought if I get in trouble, I get in trouble. Now, this brings me to this point. 
Some of you don't have the opportunity to do that. Some of you need to see if you can go to a Christian school or whether you can uh, homeschool. But some of you say, well, how can I do this? I, I, I can't afford it. Um, I know that my wife and I, we had some of our relatives help us. We had friends help us with some of the, the finances when we were homeschooling. We cut back on our budget. Now, some of you say, you know what, I can't afford that because uh, I'm a single mom, I'm a single dad, and I'm just barely surviving. One of the first things that Deborah and I did is we prayed together. We dedicated our children to the Lord, and I talked about this last, yes. last week. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know what, Lord, they are your children first. You give us a way. You tell us what to do. Um, I know that some of you, and, and again, I don't want to step on toes, but I, I, I want you to, um, to be challenged a little bit. Some of the people that I know who say, you know what, I really want my children in a Christian school because they're learning things that I just don't agree with. But we, we can't afford it. Well, sometimes I'll talk to some of these same people and they'll say, you know what, I spend three or four thousand dollars a year sending my kids to volleyball camp and gymnastics and baseball and basketball and football and all these other activities and there is nothing wrong with those activities but if you think about the consequences and what's more important like Deborah tell them a little bit about what happened to us by, uh, when we first moved back to El Paso to start the church our daughter was in gymnastics and we had to decide about going to Awanas on certain nights and learning their Bible verses and, and uh, the job that I had or, or making sure she became Nadia Komenich, a famous gymnast. <laughs> tell, tell a little bit about what happened there. Well, we, we sat down as a family and discussed um, what their interests were and what they wanted to do. Uh, and then we decided what was important as our families, our family values, uh, what we wanted them to accomplish and uh, to learn. And so then we had to decide how those activities would fit into each of those uh, nights. And we only had so much time. And um, so we sat down, and, and for all three children, we had to decide, well, each one of them got to do one activity uh, at a time instead of, that's another thing, realizing your limits and not trying to put so much on yourself as a family and or your children. So we had to do that. It was very intentional. We had to very, be very intentional. And then there was at one point that our, we had to make a choice. Is it going to be church activities and good things, or are we going to try to do some other things that they weren't quite so interested in? So we really tried to focus as far as music. We had music. We had ath athletes and all that. So um, our children, really, we really had to make some uh, time and some hard choices, but it's, it was a family decision that we felt good about afterwards. Yeah, and did you and I always agree? No, we did not. We didn't always agree, right? No. We, we had to compromise on that and, and give them up to the Lord. We had three completely different children. Mm -hmm. We uh, uh, had one who's an uh, athlete, and he plays college baseball right now, one who's uh, working to get his architect degree and is in the Army Reserves, one is a nurse, and one of them loves music. Well, all of them love music. All of music. All, that's one thing they have in common. They love music and some play instruments. But some of them could care less about athletics. My wife does not care about competition, and I I'm, I'm, was very competitive, and I, I, I wanted my kids to compete in all sorts of different activities and sports. But what we had to do is ask ourselves, what is the most important thing for our child? Because remember what I, I read in the very beginning is that the child really, now, I, and I mean this, is not our child. We had to give our children up to the Lord because we know that, that she and I are sinners. Yes. And... Uh, uh, even though I'm a pastor and she's a pastor's wife and she's a secretary and, and I love her to death, she's not perfect and neither am I. And if we are leaving things up to just ourselves and our decisions, we are not going to raise our children the way they should be. Mm -hmm. So with the last three or four minutes here, here's what I want to ask you guys to do. And I don't want to be self-serving here, but I, I really think that Mount Franklin Christian Academy is a great school. Uh, Ms. Debbie Kretcher has been there for over 25 years, and I uh, was hoping to have some, maybe some of the parents come and talk to you, uh, and so you could hear what they, what they have going on. But not even just our school. If, if, if you pray about it, 
and you have the opportunity to homeschool, to go to a Christian school, at least for the first few years. Here's the thing that my wife and I sometimes would disagree about, and it's okay to disagree about things, is I think my wife would have rather had them go all the way through Christian school, all through high school. For me, I wanted them to have a good foundation because how can you protect yourself from evil influences when you're just a little child? You know, when I used to teach public school, I would have the children seven, eight hours a day, longer time than their parents did in a, in a, in a waking day. You think about that. So that's why it's so important. So if there is a way that you can make the sacrifice, at least from preschool or so, if you can't keep them home, to find a good Christian school like Mount Franklin Christian Academy or another school that you choose, then I would really encourage you to be able to do that. See if you can get people to help you. See what kind of things uh, God brings up for you. If you can't, then this is what I told you last week. You should be the most involved parent in the whole public school. I mean, you want to be salt and light. You want to be a loving, kind person, but you can't be shy. You weren't here last week, Deb, but I told the audience a story about how when our son was in third grade in public school, they were going to read a book on witchcraft, and they were going to have to do a report on it. Well, I didn't go to the principal. I didn't pitch a fit. I didn't go to the school board and that kind of thing, but I quietly went to the teacher. I told her that was not something we wanted our son doing, and she pretty much gave us a hard time and said we were religious fanatics. But what we said, we'd like to find another book, the same reading level, have him read that book and do a, a book report. And so those are the kind of things you need to be diligently doing all the time. But then if you can, find a way to put your child in a Christian school. See if God will, will allow you to be able to do that. You know, um, there's just about... Three minutes left. Well, one minute left. Are you saying? Here's what I want to do. Deborah, can you pray for us and just pray for the, the parents out there, single moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, and let's ask God to bless our children. Dear Father, we just love you and thank you most of all for your love and mercy towards us. And Lord, I pray for all the families in our community, in our church, Lord, and in our nation, Lord. We just pray that we would just rise up and be called a, a nation of that loves the Lord, Lord, and help us to claim your promises and your word, Lord, and to know that we are yours and that we are not parenting alone, Lord, that we have you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, just thank you. I thank you for my wife and my family, Lord. I, I intercede right now to people who are listening, who maybe their children are in rebellion, Lord, or maybe parents that are in rebellion. Father, we ask that you would please bless our families and bring us back to Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.